let's see. Checking my audio input. See if I'm live. Let's see. There we go. I think you can hear me all. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, I took a small break. I needed some time off to prepare new material. I needed some time off to think about what I'm going to do in the future with the channel. Keep things interesting for you guys and also for myself, of course. And um, I hope that you have all had a great summer so far and a new season of episodes and of live streams has begun so and that new one is today let me just open something up here for you um let's see so today i want to talk about writing melodies and writing melodies is actually um, a topic that's very difficult to explain because it's not as straightforward as, for example, harmony. When we talk about harmony, um, you know, when we have a one, four, five progression, so that would be, for example, A, D, E, and then to A, that's what it is. And there's no magic to it. And of course, things in harmony can get complex as well. But, you know, when we talk about modulation and when we talk about uh, certain harmonic progressions, everything is, um, we have very, um, we have a very clear path and things are very clear when it comes to this. But when it comes to writing melodies, you don't feel that, you don't see that much material online. And uh, that's why I find it interesting to, um, no, let me take it back. Uh, so the thing is, you, you don't see that much information about writing melodies. And the reason is, is because it's a little bit more abstract. And we can talk mostly about guidelines and the things that you can do. And, um, you know, uh, there's, no, there's no clear rule to get the perfect melody. Because this is also dependent on each style. Um, so, um, without further ado... I want to get to the information. I want to first do some um, some theoretical background about what exactly is a melody. When we talk about a melody, um, it's quite com uh, quite complex because melody has to do with a lot of musical parameters, and musical parameters are, for example, um, what we see here. Here, in my first example. Here, melody also deals with rhythm. And if we move to the next one, we can see that melody... Oh, wait, I'm talking, but you cannot see my screen. One second. So I need to double check if you can see me now. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so... Let me take that uh, one step back. So why melodies are so um, abstract and also difficult to, uh, to explain is because we have a lot of parameters that we need to work with at the same time. So for example, as I said here, melody also deals with rhythm, as you can see here. But it also deals with metrum. As you can see here, we can change with, to a 3-4 time signature. And that's something we need to deal with. Then when I go down, for example, when you write a melody, we can deal with arpeggios, chord arpeggios. As you can see here, we have an A minor arpeggio and then we have an F minor arpeggio. So that also has a melodic quality. So if I continue asking the question, what kind of parameters are we dealing with when we're writing a melody? Take a moment for yourself and maybe write it down on a piece of paper. Of course, I already mentioned a couple, but take some time to write them down. And I already, I already wrote one here, of course, because we also deal with scales when we write melodies, because we use scales, certain, uh, like let's say a Phrygian scale or, or the minor scale. Um, so that's one, let me write it above. So scales. So now we already have quite a, quite a few 
musical parameters that, that we need to work with when we're writing a melody. And, for example, something that we need to keep in mind when we're writing a melody is the key that we're in. For example, if we're in the key of A minor, we have a certain amount of notes that we can use. Also, when we're writing melodies, we need to keep in mind um, that dynamic has a big influence on how you perceive the melody. And then, I don't know if, if you have already written down something for yourself, but um, one thing that people often forget is, of course, we talked about notes, we talked about scales, and we talked about uh, uh, arpeggios, but what about pitch? What about um, how high a certain note is? And then also keep in mind, for example, if uh, uh, a male singer sings a low note, that, is, that will be different than when, uh, let's say, a female singer sings a low note. So what I mean by that is pitch. And then, of course, it is relative. So when, um, when a male singer sings a very high note, that has a lot of... Uh, energy with it because that male singer needs to produce a lot of volume to get, to reach that high note. So also when you're writing melodies, you need to keep in mind the pitch, also how it's tuned, for example. Um, so these are all parameters that we're dealing with when we're writing melodies. And it's it's important not to forget this because very often um, people people try to to approach writing melodies and they only think ah oh, it's it's only about uh, uh it's only about about the notes going up and down but it's you know it's it's far more than that so it it might seem as some kind of uh um uh, boring lecture but actually i i hope that this uh, for the people that did not know this yet um that it may that this maybe gives them some um, some insights on how to how to continue with certain melodies and when i go down um, because I want to go to the next thing, what I mean with uh, writing melodies, is movement. Because movement is very important with, when you're writing melodies. And what I mean by that is, um, so maybe again you can take uh, just one minute, uh, one minute of your time. Um, oh, uh, by the way, I, I just started talking, but... Um, can you also let me know if the audio is uh, is correct for you? Yes or no? Um, if you if I'm coming through clearly, yes or no? Um, so one thing that we need to keep in mind when we're writing a melody is that we have different types of motion. And what I mean by that is um, you have, for example, when I go down here in music, we have stepwise movement as you see here or actually also as you saw here in the scale so we have stepwise movement and maybe you can already uh, imagine if you have stepwise movement is that is that smooth so when there's no when there are no different notes between these notes so when you're going actually up a scale um, can you imagine, is stepwise movement, is that smooth or is that, um, let's say, uh, disconnected? Does, does it uh, bring energy or does it not bring energy? Uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to... Yes, I'm coming through, I think. Okay. Um, so then the next type of movement that we have is of course disconnected uh, movement so those are jumps and jumps in general they carry a lot of energy with them and you need to be careful with them of course because jumps they might um, they bring a lot of energy but they they can also destabilize your melody and then of course we have another type of movement and that is actually that is movement um, that stays on the same note. So that means that you have, uh, let me just see how I wrote it down on my cheat sheet, um, is stationary movement. And, <laughs> you know, stationary, that does not sound like, stationary, that does not sound like movement. Um, but it is, just listen to, oh. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. They can be between the same notes also. Actually, um, uh, as long as they go up an octave or uh, uh, an octave down, uh, those are jumps. Especially when a singer would sing that, um, that would be quite interesting because they, uh, because they really need to go to in a different range of their voice. So that, uh, that definitely counts, yeah. Um, so, and what I said about stationary movement is why I do call it movement is, for example, listen to um, a lot of rap music or, or um, a lot of music that is based on, on speech. Um, a lot of that stays on the same pitch, on the same note, or maybe it goes a little bit up and down, but, you know, almost half a sentence would be on the same note. But still, I would call that a melody. And of course, you know, it's not that black and white that it just goes from um, that, that you either only have jumps or either only have stepwise movement, of course, you know, nothing in, nothing in music is that black and white, but um, it's, it's good to keep in mind these different types of movement when you are writing melodies. And now I wanted to um, take, it, take you to the next point that I have written down is and maybe, maybe you can also already, just like I did with the other points, just think for yourself, what is the first thing that you, that you need to um, find out before you start writing a melody? So what are the first things that you, that you need to keep in mind when you're going to search for inspiration or when you're going to uh, start improvising on your instrument to get new melodies? So just... Take that in for one second while I take a sip of water. So, of course, I, uh, I don't know what your answers were, but what is one of the most important things is what is the function of your melody? So, who or what are you going to write it for? And why is this so important, you might ask? Well, if you're going to write a melody, or let's say, let's think in, in, in uh, like in song structures, you know, so we're not now talking about classical music, but let's just talk about the fixed structure of a song. Um, when you, um, when you want to write music for, let's say, a verse, what is the function of the verse? And then, if you want to write music for a chorus, what is the function of the chorus? And you, and you need to keep that in mind, because when you write music for a verse, mostly during a verse, the whole story is being told, right? The lyrics are different which, with each verse. The, um, um, the melody stays mostly, uh, the melody changes a bit, but the story is being told. And then... When you think to yourself, okay, so if I want to if I want to tell a story, and just listen to somebody's speaking voice, um, does that vary a lot in pitch? Yes or no? And then also imagine your, imagine if you would want to tell a story, do you think it is possible to tell that story with a lot of jumps? And so I maybe already answered a little bit of the question, and also. Now I'm going to switch to the chorus, is when you want to write music for a chorus, you want the melody to be memorable, right? Um, you want the melody to have more energy than it had in the verse. So that means that most likely, if you want the words and the melody to be more memorable, that means that most likely the notes will be longer in the chorus, most likely, the notes will be higher in the chorus. And then if we take it to the verse, that means that most likely, in the verse, you will have um, less of a less The distance between the notes is smaller. Uh, most likely, you will have faster notes or actually faster rhythms. Of course, you have more text and more lyrics. So I wanted to take you to... Um, one of the um, uh, song reviews or song analysis that I did, uh, that was like a couple of weeks ago, I analyzed the song of Phoebe Bridgers. 
and the song of Phoebe Bridges, I looked at what like the lowest note was in the verse, and I looked at what the highest note was in the verse. And I'll, I'll show you the score in a minute. And um, as you can see already here, because this is one of my own songs, I'll show that to you later. Uh, as you can see here, our lowest note is the D in the verse, and the highest note is the A. And then if you compare that to the chorus, we have the lowest note is a B here, and then we have the highest note that is a D, which is quite a lot higher. So this is this is more than an octave difference here. So that's quite a uh, that you know that's quite a big range. And if I switch to the score, or actually the my lead sheet that I made, and let me scroll down to. Um, well, actually, I can show you here. So here is the here is the verse. There we go. And as you can see, we have a lot more. We have a lot more lyrics, of course. And as you can see, um, a lot stays on the same pitch. And it's mostly stepwise movement, as you can. Oh wait, I can s under my uh, under my uh, screen. So when you look, you can see that mostly the notes are more or less on the same. Uh, same pitch the whole time and they don't go up that much you see so it's here like a third Here again, it's a third down third up and stepwise movement So that's what we have during the verse Because the story is being told and the story you have more words. So you have more complex rhythms and um, You know the story needs to be told let's say smoothly. So that's why you have less jumps but now, let's take it to the chorus. Here we go. So here we are, I mean, chorus 1 and 2 are all the same. Let me just go to chorus 1. I just need to see if it's... Uh, you will see it because of my, my screen. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a very smooth, uh, smooth melody. And if we now look at the chorus, um, you see already. First of all, she 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 starts on a on a high note, the D, and uh, so that's already bam on a high note. While actually in the uh, previously in the verse, she would she would constantly sing on this note here on the F here this one actually. So you see already that's a big difference. So your point of departure is already um, very different. And then she makes her way down. And you know more or less smoothly here, but still quite quite a few jumps in between. And if you see here, we have a smooth line again, and then she goes all the way down here, and then bam, again she makes a big jump. And you see another jump here, and another jump here. So that's that's what happens a lot during um, um, during choruses is that you have big jumps going on because the energy needs to be higher during a chorus and um, let's see if I can also play to you uh, one of my own songs so here so you see here again the difference this is the verse this is the range of the verse and here we have the range of the chorus that's quite a big difference now this here is one of my own songs you don't see it yet but I'll show you the score in a in a minute and this in the verse, this is the distance. This is the range in which mostly everything happens. And I want to show you also the, um, the rhythms and everything. And then in the pre-chorus, we see that the range is shifted with almost an octave. And you see here also the distance is almost an octave. And I just want to quickly, I want to see if I can play it to you. So um, I'm going to... You need to focus on here where my mouse is on this part. Yeah. So here with eyes closed, vibrant times here. So this is the verse part. And as you might be able to see, it's relatively, relatively stable. Small notes, um, stepwise movement here, some small, some small jumps. But again, it's only a third. And again, stepwise movement movement down right okay let me see if i can uh if i can play it to you i need to i need to wear my 
headphones to us so that I can also hear it. Let's see. Okay, so that was the first. So did you hear how, uh, yeah, I know how much small movement there was in the verse? Uh, not so much going on, let's say, because why? Because you want to tell the story. You know, you want to, to take the listener by the hand and you don't take the listener by the hand if you <laughs> smack them in the face with a, with a lot of jumps and a, a melody that starts way up high. And now I want to play to you the pre-chorus and you can already see in the in the score here you can already see this jump it's quite a big jump and also the range is quite high right and it stays in the higher register and then we even go higher here so let me play that to you now so you can hear the difference and then maybe i can play it verse and pre-chorus after each other so that you can compare So did you notice did you notice the difference in um in range just one more time quickly because and I'm playing this uh one of my own tracks because the problem is with uh with YouTube that I that, you know if I play something else I'll get uh, copyright uh, copyright blocked so <laughs> so I don't want that. Uh, uh thanks very much Jace. Uh, it's um it's a song that I wrote for uh, for my project Facing Mountains. It's uh, actually last year I released, um, I finished writing it, and it was released in um, last December. Um, let's see. So uh, I, I want to play to you the verse and then also the pre-chorus, and for you to compare it. Bring time Okay, so yeah, so that's um, so I hope that you that you hear the difference um, between those sections. And now let's take it. I wish I could play more more examples, but that is uh, simply not possible due to uh, due to copyright uh, copyright stuff. Um, just let me quickly look at my notes also. I was thinking about uh, uh, like writing live a melody, but um, to be honest, I did not know how to how to approach that, how to deal with that in a live situation. So I need to practice that a little bit more to um, to see how to do that technically, uh, technologically, or if that's a correct word, um, because I don't know how to connect all the things and whatnot. But I do want to give you one uh one tip and that's actually going to be part of a new episode not of upcoming week but uh but the week after that and that is a trick that i always do when i start when i don't know what what when i don't know what i want to write and it's actually a trick that that helps um let's say professionals and beginners uh to create a melody so what i always do 
is, and you'll see this, that a lot of songwriters actually only stay in this, this kind of register. So what I do is I choose, let me write them down, three notes. So three notes. And uh, let's say that we are in the, the key of A minor. So I'll just write it here. So just um, see it here. So key of A minor. Okay. So the thing is with these three notes is that they are one of the most important notes actually, because why are they so important? Because you can harmonize these three notes with these three notes, you can harmonize it with all each of the scale degrees that you have in a key. So that gives you so much freedom to, um, to improvise or to play. Let me see if I can uh, do something on the spot. Maybe if you like, uh, no, first, first I want to do something else. So, so these three notes are very important. And what I do is I play a game with myself. Um, uh, when I write these, um, when I try to write a melody with this, I play the game of how much can I make, uh, can I vary, can I make variations with just these three notes? How can I still tell a story? And so how can I still be interesting? And then you try to write a chord progression underneath. So for example, um, now I will do it with the guitar. I'll do it with the electric guitar next time. Okay, well, so I'll just need to do it by talking. Um, I do have one example that I can, that I can play with you and I'll do that in a minute. Um, so what the important thing is, is that you need to realize that this is your tonic. So this is your, your, your first scale degree. So I'll do this. Right one. This is your second scale degree, and this is your third scale degree. So when you have uh, this is the A. So the first note is da. That's the A. Da. That's the C. So you have da da da. That's the second note. So when you hear this, eh, when you hear da, 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 do you hear that that note wants to go back to the tonic, to the A, to da, 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 da. So that B, this note, is actually dissonant. So that wants to go somewhere, that wants to move. This note, our root note is stable. That note does not really want to go anywhere. That's, you know, that's our tonic. That's our home base. Um, nothing's going to happen with that one. So this note is going to be our color note. So we need to play around with that note. So for example, uh, I'm not, I'm, now I'm just going to sing some melodies uh, out of the blue. Hmm? Da. So what you can do, for example, you start your melody on the C. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 And this is just a, you know, a very quick improvisation. But you see that you can still play around with these, with these notes. And then once you, uh, for example, uh, a song from Ed Sheeran, one of his newer songs. Uh, which is called Bad Habits. Let's see if you can uh, if you can hear hear the input. The guitar is not super tuned, but Okay, that's better. Let's see if you can hear this. Okay. Um, so 
let me play it in A minor like he also does. And what he does in his song is that he um, he only sings these two notes here. He sings the B and the C. So his first part of the melody is, is this. Every now you look around. So that's only this. Do, 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 do. So it's actually only that half step movement. And this whole this whole beginning is like this. Every now you look around, you know you can't say no. So that's it. So it's only this. So he only does this. So then he goes to the note below this one, and then he goes back to the A. So you see, he makes an entire first melody with only three notes. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. You start this as a, you start playing melodies with these three tones. And once you get something interesting, of course, you know, you can maybe play uh, one note above once, you know, go one note above here, go to the, go to the D. Or as Ed Sheeran did, go to one note below here. Then you start adding to your melody. But you start first with this blueprint. And you'll see that so many, um, so many melodies in pop music are built on, on only three notes. Uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Also, that song is only. Da, 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 da. So if I wrote if I wrote the notes down that he that he sings, um, here you'll see it here below. He sings E. He only sings those three notes. There's a guy from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Only, only those three notes. Da, 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 da. So once you know how to work with those three notes. Or with groups of three, and then especially uh, the notes are important: the tonic, second scale degree, and the third scale degree. Because you can putting away, putting away the guitar. Um, because especially these notes are important because you can harmonize it with all of the scale degrees that you need. For example, I will write above here what chords you can do this. What chords you can play on the second scale degree for the people who are curious. Um, so, for example, what we have here, of course, we have the um, we have the second scale degree. We have the seventh, uh, fifth scale degree, and we have the seventh scale degree. So you can play that. So we already have those. And then on these, on this one, on the tonic, I need to move this one up a bit. On the tonic, you can play, uh, of course, um, let's see the first, because that's, okay, shit. let me take it out then. On this one, you can play the first scale degree. On this one, you can play the um, fourth scale degree. And on this one, you can play the fifth, uh, the, um, the, 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 the sixth scale degree. Yeah. And on this one, you can play the, write it down. You can play the third scale degree. You can play the first scale degree. And you can. Um, what exactly do you mean with, can, uh, can we use the circle of fifths to figure out the, uh, a chord progression here? Like to find out what the, what the key is or what the center is or? So, and I'll just continue with this. So we have the, the third, the third, the first and the sixth. They use this. So, so you see, you have all of your skill degrees. You have them. Um, they're present in here. 
see. Just waiting for for the for the further question. Okay, I'll just see it when it pops in. Ah. Uh, well, yes, yes, of course you can. Uh, um, you can use the the circle of uh, of fifths. What what I what I mostly do is um, in uh, in in music. You know, in notated music, you'll see it at the beginning of uh, of um, of a piece. Let's see if I can. Sh I think I closed my. Yeah, I closed the score. But here, I'll open motion sickness here. As you can see here, here we have uh, uh, five flats. If five flats equals to the key of D flat major. Uh, that's a bit. Uh, that's a bit difficult, of course. But um, so so you read this. The, you simply read the the flats or the sharps at the beginning of a key. Or of course, you can also um, if the if it does not have any sharps or flats at, flats at the beginning, but you do suspect that it's in a, in a certain key, you can also count the the sharps that you have and try to find out if they occur regularly so for example if throughout a, a piece constantly the the f for example constantly the f is raised and you see that it every time it goes back goes to the g then most likely the piece is in g major and in many cases if it ends and starts or only ends on the on the g major you know you can you can probably guess that it's in a, in g major and then once you know that, you can use the G major scale. Um, you can use the G major scale to to write melodies. And of course, when we talk about this this three note technique that I that I'm talking about here, then you know that in the case of G major, you know that your first note is G. Then you know that your second scale degree is A, and then you know that your third scale degree is B. So you can use those notes to. Um, to start composing, to start writing a melody with these three notes. And again, once you um, feel comfortable with those notes, once you get a, a story that sounds nice melodically, you know, you play with the dissonant. So, you know, the second skill degree is dissonant that wants to go somewhere. It wants to resolve either to the third skill degree or the first skill degree. And once you have something that already sounds a bit interesting, then you see like, okay, can I expand it a little bit? Can I maybe add one note above? So, you know, can I occasionally add the fourth scale degree, maybe before it goes down to the third? Or can you maybe put one note below your tonic, before below your first scale degree? And that way you start expanding. And uh, that really makes you aware of um, the melodic tension really makes you aware of like, okay, where is this melody going? And the less notes you have, the better, because you need to be more creative and you need to be, um, you, you really need to compose, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, so that's actually, that's a, what, I, um, what I wanted to say um, about writing melodies. Uh, I will come back in the future with another live stream about uh, about writing melodies and i hope to then do it live or maybe if there are some questions beforehand that i can compose some examples in any case you know uh, as you probably already know on the channel i have multiple videos um, that talk about writing melodies already and in two weeks most likely there will be a video about this technique that I showed you, but then I'll explain it a little bit further and I'll also compose some of my own examples to show you. And maybe I'll refer to some popular music, but in any case, that will be, that will be most likely the, um, what I'll be going for. Um, and so if there are no questions in between, um, then I will shut down the live stream. I just give it one second. Uh, see if anybody has any questions and yeah uh, sorry jace i i did, was not prepared for uh for writing in um in a in a different mode or anything so uh, that will be something that i'll prepare for next time uh just with the technology today it was a little bit uh, a little bit difficult and a bit of a hassle to get everything uh, set up i don't know why but um so that's a bit uh, inconvenient uh, but in any case 
uh, I will do that. So uh, thanks for the suggestion. I will take it into. Uh, uh, I will put it in my agenda, and uh, new episodes will be coming up, of course, uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. And if there are no more questions, then I will say ver thank you very much for watching this time. And as always, um, actually, <laughs> it's been a long time ago. I for I forgot uh, um, what I always said. Oh yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, see you next time.